Hi, welcome to the Chaz Palmentary Podcast. Like I always say, if you're enjoying the uh, content what we have here on my show, please subscribe and hit the like button. Uh, we like to uh, engage the audience. If you have a question, Chaz Palmentary show at gmail.com chasparmentary show at gmail.com don't forget i'm doing my one-man show uh the original show that robert de niro saw 34 years ago i still do it and it's an incredible show the one-man show of bronx tale go to chasparmentary.net what do we have for today folks well he was such a big hit we're bringing him back <laughs> the one the only we're doing another episode on Old school Sandy Blue Eyes. Sandy, how are you today? I'm Sandy? doing great. Thank you for having me back. And I, I'm glad you're thank back. Thank you out there for uh, all your uh, comments. Everybody was very, very nice. Thank Everybody you. was great. And we made a, uh, we, and we, we got to tell the audience, we, especially the young ladies out there, if you want to get up close to these baby blue eyes <laughs> and you want to see uh, Sandy Blue Eyes, you can go to OK. Cupid, and just go under Sandy. Is that right, Sandy? Yes. The um, the uh, OK Cupid had changed all the names, right? And now they're using just the first names of everybody. So I'll, I'm just under Sandy S A N D Y. So if you want to speak to Sandy, give him a call and chit chat about old school. Please do that. So Sandy, let's start with old school. We know you're like one of the kings of old school. We're gonna have some more old school people on the show uh, soon. But let's talk about you. Why do you feel you have to dress this way? Why is that? Well, it's like I said, you know, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And, uh, you know, you feel good when you dress nice. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, uh, you get a lot of compliments when you dress nice. That's what makes you feel even better. So I... I'd rather make it a good impression instead of, uh, you know. Now, now, some people say, you know, the, 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 the handkerchief, the colors, uh, the white box you're wearing, and, and the chain around your neck. That's kind of like, excuse the expression, it could be old-fashioned. Am I wrong, guys? They could, somebody could say that. But what is the difference between old-fashioned and old-school? What do you feel? Is there a difference there? No, no. I think old fashioned coincides with old school. Okay. I think I think the gentlemen of years ago, this is the way they dressed, and that's very true. And it was a classy look, and I like to I like to follow up with that. I'd like to just be a classy fella and look classy. You know, there's a big um, one of the biggest fashion disasters a man can do is not ma is is match his uh, pocket square to his tie. That's like a big no-no, I've heard. When you know when you match your pocket square to your tie. Yes. What you like to match your pocket square to your shirt? No, most of the time it's to the tie. It is. Oh, let's edit. Let's edit that out. Un mind. Unfor <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> now they they don't sell the exact um, pocket square to the tie. Okay. So you so I try to get it within close. the means of the of the color. Okay. Right. Close. I'm wrong on that. Now. We're talking about old school here, folks. Old school. This is the king of old school. One of the kings. We're going to have another king on soon. Uh, Sandy, is it true? I have a note here. Is it true? The same man has been cutting your hair for 47 years. 47 years. The same gentleman has been cutting my hair. You won't let nobody else cut your hair. Nobody else can touch it. Absolutely not. And you not. get a haircut how many days? Every, Every 44 days. Every 44 days, folks. When's your next haircut? In uh, 18 days from now. <laughs> That's minute, correct. Why 44? Um, because then it's, I know every 44 days it starts to look unruly and it starts, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> when was the first time you made this measurement? At what age? Oh, my God. I'll go, I'm going back to 18 years old, 17 years you old. You knew on the 45th day. <laughs> Unruly. Absolutely. You have to be clean cut. I like to look clean cut. You like cut. to be clean cut. Yes. Now, what happens is, like, say you're you're away somewhere. You can't make it. And, now, first of all, let's give Ray a plug. Where's Ray's, uh, it's called what? The Hairport. The Hairport, yes. It's now, in Port it? Jefferson, <laughs> Long Island. It's in, Wait, it's called the Hairport? It's called the Hairport because it's, <laughs> it's in Port Jefferson, Long Island. Right. My, my, my Goomba is like my brother, Ray Legala. Yeah. 
631-473-1215. Right. And it's near an airport? No, it's called Hair Port because of Port Jefferson. Jefferson. Oh, because of Port Jefferson. Yes. Now, how did you two meet? We, uh, we, actually, <laughs> we actually grew up in Brooklyn together, and our fathers would bring us to the same barbershop. And that's when haircuts were 75 cents a haircut. Wow. And our fathers would give the barber a quarter tip like it was a big deal. Oh, yeah. So our families knew each other from back in the day. So you got hair, haircuts together, and then he got sucked into the life of haircutting. Absolutely. And then he's been cutting your hair for 47 years. Yeah, well, we, we had gotten reacquainted because I worked for a linen company. And I was actually, before I became a police officer, I was delivering to his haircutting salon. And I, I asked him to cut my hair one day. It came perfect. <laughs> from then on, that was it. Now, when he cuts your hair, let's tell everybody, how long are you in the chair? Two hours. Two hours. What? Two hours. Wait a minute. So you guys are like a married couple. What do you even talk about what, after 50 how years? Could he, uh, we talk no, about but, the family. Well, but first you make him, he cuts all your hair, right? No, he, he cuts the hair on my head. Right. And then he just... He, I, I'm not very hairy on my back, right? But he, we go in the back, and he, he takes, he takes the shaving cream. I bring my own razor, <laughs> and he does the hair. He's got to, he's got to make, he's got to make the line perfect, perfect. in the back, perfect. Right. And then he takes all the couple of hairs the on frizz, my neck, the frizz on your yeah. neck, and and on my back, he takes all that off. He takes all. I that like off. it nice and smooth. Have you, you ever had nice and smooth for yeah. the ladies, folks? That's correct. For the ladies. Have you ever had any other haircuts other than the one, the one you have now? I'm you ever, sorry? You ever have any other hairstyles? No. no. this I, I've had this style since I'm at least 15 years old. Yeah. yeah. Same style. Same style. Different color hair now. A different it's, color because now, now salt, I'm a little older. We, the, the women, they like that salt and pepper, right? Same yeah, they do. I got to admit that. They do. Now, has he ever gave you a bad cut? No. You guys never fought in 47 no, years of never. Hair. Never. No. Never. No. This, I love him. I love his family. Now, what happens if someday he's not here? What do you do? Well, I make sure he lets me know if he's going on vacation. Oh, okay. This way I coincide the haircut prior to his vacation right. to when he comes back. Well, this guy better take care of himself. Ray, you better take care of yourself. Eat healthy, right, Ray. He's in good shape. You better stay in good shape, Raymond. He's got 20, seven children, 20, 23 grandchildren. My God. And I think three great-grandchildren. What's his name, Ray what? Ray Legala. Ray Legala. And Stephanie. I can walk you. I can walk you. Airport. Airport in Port Jefferson. Airport, Port Jefferson on Main Street. You want a haircut? Go to him and tell him Sandy Blue Eyes sent you. Well, they call me Rocky there. Oh, they call you Rocky? What? Yeah. what? Wait. Well, well, why do they call you Rocky? Because when I started delivering the linen there, they said back in those days when, when, when the movie Rocky came out, they said the way I talk, because I was from Brooklyn, this is Long Island. Right. And they said the way I talk, right. I sounded like Sylvester Stallone and Rocky. So they still call you Rocky. They, to this day, they still call me Rocky. Wow. Sandy Blue Eyes, but you can tell them Rocky sent you. Absolutely. Okay. So now you worked at a linen company? Yes. What was the strangest job you had before being a police officer? Strangest? Yeah, like breaking legs. I, okay. Yeah, breaking <laughs> legs. I worked at Kennedy Airport with a helicopter company. Uh, when I was a young, young boy, about 12, 13 years old, I used to take a, a, a train from, from where I lived in Brooklyn to downtown Brooklyn for um, a car club um, where they taught you how to drive. And I would put all the documentation in an envelope and we would mail it out to all the different people to come into the car club oh. to learn how to drive. Sounds like a boring job. Yeah, it was boring, but I was just a kid. All right, now let's talk about Sandy Blue Eyes is so unique. He's so old school. Let's talk about your diet. Diet, okay. When you go to Costco's, right, you buy eggs. How many eggs do you buy, Sandy? 500 at a time. <laughs> that's, a, that's serious. You buy 500 eggs. I mean, 500. you buy them in what, packages of hundreds? Or? Packages of 90. Packages of 90. Yeah. Now, tell us why you buy 500 eggs at a time. Well, I train every day. I'm into physical fitness. Train every day. I like to keep myself in shape. Right, go ahead. And, um... Back in the day, I used to run a gym in Farmingdale, Long Island. And the gentleman that owned the gym, uh, he was Mr. America in 1972. And he taught me that how to work out, and he taught me about protein. 
So when I get the eggs home, I hard boil them. I have big pots. Right. I hard boil 200 at a time. <laughs> oh, God. I taste. Does, does that smell at all? No, not, no, not really, no. Oh. And how many eggs do you eat every day? I eat 10 to 12 eggs every day, but the yolks go in the garbage can, and I just eat the whites. Right. Because the yolks have fat and cholesterol. Well, that's what people say. That's but what they say, but yes, that's I what know, I was but taught. But that's what you were taught. Right. But once in a while, it's okay to have a whole egg. A lot of co coralline in there. Right. Uh, coralline, and it's very good for your eyes. But that's okay. You do what you got to do, Sandy Blue Eyes. We know you're old school. So I just eat the whites. So you just eat the whites. What about and dinner? And what time do you eat? What to, wait, let's, let's, let's get the whole thing straight. He, <laughs> he is so regimented. What time do you wake up? 6.30 every morning. 6.30 every morning. No alarm clock, no nothing. No alarm. I don't need it. My okay. body just gets You up. wake up first thing you do. First thing I do, right. brush my teeth, make the bed. You always make your bed. Oh, as soon as I get up, She's, bed's made. And then you go get your coffee. I go to 7-Eleven, I buy my three newspapers yeah. and my decaf coffee. At what time? 7 o'clock? 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. They know it's you when you pull in. They, they have, have, it, the, they they have it laid the, out. They, they have it laid out. They see the Nova pull up. Yes. They have it. All the, the three newspapers in the bag. And the coffee. I, well, I have to do my own coffee, of course. You have to do your own right. coffee. Okay, so you get the Fat coffee. Fat-free milk in the coffee. Fat-free milk. So you go home, you have your breakfast. Well, I'm eating my eggs. I have 10 vitamins a day. 10 vitamins. With the, with the egg whites. Do you watch TV when you're doing this? Yeah, I watch the news first. The news first. Go and ahead. then I watch uh, Kelly Ripper and Ryan Seacrest. Ryan Seacrest. I get it. Ryan Seacrest. From 9 to 10. From 9 to 10. And then ten, from 10 on, my day starts. Then your day starts. Right. Your chores, your motor. Mo we talked about your lawn. lawn on the last episode, that crazy lawn of yours. Right. Okay. And, uh, wow, that's pretty fascinating. We only and got about one. Dinner? That's one meal, yeah. We have dinner. What about dinner? Right. Nothing from breakfast to dinner. Nothing. No, except if I feel hungry, five almonds. Five almonds. That's it. You hear that, folks? Not five six. almonds. No more than five, no. Not four, not six. No, Five. five. Okay, and then what do you do for dinner? For dinner, I eat uh, chicken. I go to this place in Bethpage, Long Island. Um, it's called Zorn's on Hempstead Turnpike. Okay. Um, I get three chickens at a, at a time. They cut them all up. And I get six sides. I get uh, mixed vegetables. Right. Three mixed vegetables and three corn. This is how you live. That's it. Okay, and you have, uh, what time you eat dinner, Sandy Blue Eyes? No later than 4 o'clock. No later than 4 o'clock. That's correct. And when you eat, uh, you watch TV when you do it. Watch TV. What I watch you? Judge Judy. Judge Judy, he watches, folks. <laughs> Every day, 4 o'clock. Every day at 4 o'clock, this man watches Judge Judy at 4 o'clock while he's eating his pieces of chicken and corn. <laughs> Would you ever date Judge Judy? No, absolutely not. <laughs> okay. She's a nice <laughs> woman, but... <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, now... Sandy. And a lot of water. A gallon of water a day. A gallon of water a day. Yes. Sandy, I got to say, I know you've been you know, around a long time and they call you Sandy Blue Eyes. But you have to admit, you're very regimented. I mean, are you going to find a woman that you can start dating that could say, Sandy, let's just go out for dinner. Let's do this. Let's do I mean, how are you? Are you, a, you give them a little leeway? Like? Sure, sure. If I met somebody, I don't expect her to live exactly like I live. Right. But uh, no, I... I could be flexible. You could be flexible. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the things that you could be flexible with, Sandy Blue Eyes. Okay. Uh, all of a sudden, we've been reading a lot about uh, home, Pimp. Pimp has brought us to our attention, and so did Dante, these young guys today. You and I were old school. That the new thing now is open marriages. Now, before you say anything, okay. let me just say, open marriages are the new thing. People, they get on the internet. They want to know who's in an open marriage. That, that's a lot of swinging today. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? Absolutely not. No <laughs> way, no how. No how. Impossible. Abs no. Now, so, what's the problem? Just not for me, you know. Uh -huh. Just uh, you know, uh, if I'm if I'm if I'm in a um, um, monogamous relationship, then that's it. Now, what if your your new girlfriend of nine months comes to you and pitches this idea to you? Okay. Or your new wife. What do you say that, in the moment? That she wants to be open? Yeah. In an open marriage, maybe once every few years you, that you guys cheat on each other. Then whatever clothes she has in my house, she's got to pack up, <laughs> and it's time to go. That's it. That's it? That's it. I can't have it. I can't have it. No, I can't have it. How many people have you broken up with in your life? A lot. A lot. Triple digits? Probably, yes. Yeah, probably I, I have a good idea. Yeah. Sandy yeah. And, and Dad. 
Can you give us your worst first date story? My worst f- first date. Oh, Sandy, you go first. Go first ahead. first date disaster. Want me to go first? Nightmares. You're thinking. Go ahead. All right. My w- I've had a lot of worst first dates to be honest with you, uh, but I think. Oh yeah, I would have to say, I went over this girl. I saw her. I met her in a club, and she seemed very nice. She was dressed nice, and uh, we talked on the phone. And I said, "Listen, when we go out for dinner, I was about twenty-five years old." And she said, uh, "Come on, my house. I want to make you di- uh, dinner." And I was like, "No, you don't have to do that. We, you know, we just met." I said, "Come on, let me." T- oh no, I always like to t- make dinner for a guy. I really like you. I want to make you dinner. So I said, fine. She was going to make gravy, sauce. So I went over her house. Now, you got to picture this now. I, I'm, I'm not as regimented as he is, but I'm very skivosa. You know, I, I, like things that are not right, I skeeve. So I go over her house, and she, I open the door. She looks lovely. She says she's going to make um, uh, pasta for me and stuff. You know, I said, okay. So on the stove, there's, I look. And I'm actually stunned. On the stove, there's this big pot that she's making the sauce, the gravy, right? And right next to it, on another burner, not on, obviously, is another big pot. And her cat was in the pot, the big (laughs) pot, looking over at the sauce pot. What? And she goes, I went, at first I thought, she cooking the frigging cat? And And I said, what are you doing? She goes, oh, he loves to watch me cook. She goes, I hope you don't mind cats. She had sex cats. <laughs> and they were roaming all over, jumping on tables. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I got the hairball in my mouth. Can't have I it. I can feel it. I can't have it. Can't have it. I, and I, <laughs> I mean, because you know, a hair had it got to be in that sauce. They're jumping over the stove. This one's right on the edge, looking down in the pot. I'm sorry. There's hair all over the damn place. That was it. I couldn't say. I had to leave. Now, how many cats is the line for you? <laughs> for me? Yeah. For both of you? Oh, no, no, no. I, I'm not a cat person. Not uh, even one single cat can be in her home. I can be flexible with that. Okay. But like a bunch of cats, not that's not for me. Don't forget. Then I then once I saw the six cats, I picked up an odor. No matter how <laughs> you, you get true, an odor. Right. I don't care. Yeah. You got six cats. There's some shit going on, man. Right. I'm sorry. No pun intended, and, right? Uh, and I couldn't, uh, I couldn't deal with it. I'm sorry, I could deal with it. I love animals, but when it comes to food and animals, even my own dog. I mean, I, lo- I got, I had four dogs at one time, and I had a great cat. Tigger was a great cat, but we didn't put him. He wasn't allowed to get on the kitchen table or go on the stove. Right. That was out. Yeah. I mean, what do you, what do you, you old school guys? What do you think about everyone bringing their dog and animals on the planes now? Well, if it's a service animal, I could see it. But like half of those are, you know. There, a yeah. lot of them are. I saw somebody on a uh, flight to LAX with a Great Dane as oh, a come service on. dog. Yeah, no, this, now, now we're getting I, a little... I'm not kidding. A Great Dane. Yeah. I was How? on the plane. The you woman, saw the Great Dane? I saw it. It was, yeah, it was like no. three rows in front of me. It was you the know Great what? Dane. You got to get, you know what? Smarten up, everybody. Could you right. get a little tough here a little bit? We grew, <laughs> we grew up a little, right. a little tough. <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah, you gotta God. have respect for other passengers. You gotta you come gotta on. think about other people. Exactly. I saw a woman, she was trying to bring a peacock on the plane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you see that? Remember that, was, that in the newspaper? Yep, a peacock that went like this. Yeah, it's crazy. Hitting people in the face. <laughs> a peacock. I say to the woman, hey, what peacock? It's not happening. Right. We can't have it. We can't have it. As Robert De Niro said in Goodfellas, I can't have can't it. Have it. I can't have it. Nobody's saying you can't do what you got to do. Now, now, Sandy, you're on a weekly show. Wait, 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 wait Sandy. Huh? What's your first date disaster? Oh, yes, right. Your date. That's right. Well, what this wasn't. You? This wasn't. It, it wasn't really a disaster. It. Um, uh, when I was a police officer, uh, I was handling an accident. Oh, right. On the Cross Bronx Expressway, we pulled up on my partner and I in the motorcycles. And we felt bad for these young ladies because they were going to Marina Del Rey for a shower, for a wedding shower. And I called for a couple of police cars to bring them, and the girl was so appreciative. And um, I asked her for her number. She's a very attractive young lady. I asked her for her number, and she gave me her number. And the next, we made arrangements to go out the next, the next night. 
But unfortunately, I was getting off of work at about 11 o'clock. Right. So she says, no, there's no problem. You know, to, uh, her family was born and raised in Italy, her, her mother and father. So I says, well, that's kind of late. You know, I don't want to be disrespectful. No, 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 come to my house. She gave me her address. I rang the bell. You know, I picked up some flowers. I rang the bell. Picked up flowers? I rang the bell, and um, her dad answered the, uh, answered the front door. <laughs> At what time? It had to be about 12, right? It was about like 11, 11.30. I had to take a shower in the precinct. Right, I was okay. rushing around. Good. Dressed nice. Pick, you know, I had picked it. Uh, I got the flowers earlier. The dad comes to the door, and all of a sudden, the dad is talking in Italian. People were coming out of the woodwork from upstairs, <laughs> from next door. They had a dining room that was set for like a like a like a small wedding. I had to sit next to the father. They had every they had the, the brisotto on the table. Forget about it. First yeah. time you at the girl's house. First time. First time. time. Oh. So Talk just about her a few hours ago. So now we wow. sit down. We sit down. <laughs> Go ahead. The, the, the dad gets up, and he says something in Italian. He raises the glass of wine. And he, he makes me stand up, and he says, welcome to the family. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Oh, I mean, that's, and this is, this is a true story, right? True story. True welcome story. to the family. Welcome to the family. Where is this girl right now? Honey, Sandy Blue Eyes, he's a star. Her name was Dolores. I won't forget Dolores, that. Dolores, you're rushing too much, Dolores. What do you even do in that moment? What did you do? What, what, did you do? what can you do? What can I do? You, you say ate, thank you. You ate the food. You sat down. Yeah, the food. He he said, sat down. Bur -boop, bur -boop. What was I going to do? Did you hang out with that girl? Did anything happen with this girl? <laughs> no, or? we. You know, I I had the dinner. Now it's like uh, two o'clock in the morning. They were just serving. Did you, you know, go out with her after well, that yeah, date? Yeah, I, I did take her out because I went oh, on okay. an official date with her. Right, but um, you know, it didn't last too long. No, just the, just the one date. <laughs> but she was. Uh, oh. Wow, cool. No, she was a very <laughs> nice girl. Very nice. Very attractive. Attractive. Very attractive. But. Uh, like, 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 like glue with the family, you know, I, I can't, I can't have what's it. Some of, what's some of the things that you like in a woman, Sandy Blue Eyes? You're like, I know you like hoop earrings. Oh, you mean as far as dress-wise? Yeah, yeah, dress, you like a woman who wears hoop earrings. I like long, straight hair. You like long, straight, but if she doesn't have long hair, is that okay? It depends on how short it is. Buzz cut. No good. Buzz cut, no good. All right, say she's gorgeous and she has short hair. You mean to the shoulder? No, to the ears. It depends. I would have to. It depends. Sandy, you're very superficial. Sandy. I like. It's, it's just what I like. Oh my now, god! You, you keep mentioning Long Island. What's the most old school thing that you've ever done on Long Island? The most old school thing? Yeah, like back in the day. Like, did Long Island have wise guys? I don't know. Yeah, Long yeah. Island. Yeah, they got a lot of a lot of wise guys out there. A lot yeah. of wise guys. Well, did you ever witness anything crazy out there? Anything crazy? Yeah. No, not really. No. no. It's very quiet on Long Island. Right. Yeah. What about you know, when everybody sits in the back in the back. Nobody sits on their stoop. Mm. You know, when I first got there, I met these young young kids. I was only a teenager. And I tried to get everybody together so we could play street stickball. Right. And I I said, uh, the Johnny Pump will be first base. Somebody put 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 your coat on second base. Then we'll use that as second oh, base. Or the sewer could be second or the, base. There's no sewers. Oh, there's no there's sewers there. That's there. That's right. That's right. What about in bed where you grew up? Oh, that's a different story. <laughs> Everybody knew what the Johnny Pump was. And the sewer. Sewer to sewer. Sewer to sewer. So Long Island kids were really country even back then. Oh, absolutely. Oh, the okay. Long Island kids that I met were born and raised on Long Island. I just happened to move out there with my parents. Wow. At the time. Now, we can't help but notice, excuse us if we notice, your incredible tan. Uh, so we talked about it, I know, in the last episode. Do you like, uh, you lay down uh, every day. We know you're retired and your beautiful home you have. And uh, so you lay down and, uh, and just get some sun, right? Yeah, I, lay, I, have, uh, I have my lounge chair all spread out on my deck. On your deck? And you mm -hmm. lay down in your, your home and... Uh, uh, I, I know he was. He's such a fanatic over the sun, and it was really hot. I bought you. I, I gave you a right. gift. I was a fan that blows water mist like a mist. You know, like those expensive hotels. You know, I, at the, I we used to have that at the Peninsula Hotel. They had these big fans that would blow a mist of water, and it would cool down the temperature. And you love the fan. Well, right? When I come here, I go in the pool, and right. unfortunately, I don't have a pool. You don't have, and a pool. I love the pool. Right. So one day I got home from here. 
And my brother sent me a fan. It was it was it was on my stoop. <laughs> I undid the fan. I called him up to thank him, and he said, "No, the second package is coming." And I had to connect these uh, these sprayers to the fan. Right. You turn the fan on. I I'm sprawled out on my lounge chair. Folks, when I tell you there's nothing better, it's the best. Right. It is the best. It really, it really brings the body temperature right. down. Right, and you can stay out there an extra few hours. Three hours, four hours I'm out there. You're out there, it doesn't even bother No. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Thank you. It's Say beautiful. your blue eyes. Now, before we came on camera, you had told an interesting story about what you were bullied about as a kid. Oh, yes. Right. We got to go into we're that. We're talking episode. about, yeah, somebody called in on my Neighborhood Logic episode about bullying. They said that... Uh, his okay. son is being bullied. What should he do? And I, I suggested that first they go to the teacher. They should meet the parents and absolutely. Decide. But you were bullied when you were a kid, yes. right? When I was when I was born, unfortunately, I had uh, an extra piece of um, of flesh hanging off my ear, and uh, it, it looked it looked ridiculous and it looked it looked disgusting. And being that my mother was also old, old, old school, right. she was afraid that if if she had it. If she had surgery done as a child, that um, might do something. Might it might hurt the eardrum right, or yeah, something right. like that. So, I when I went to Catholic school from first to eighth grade, I was bullied like crazy. I would I would get into fights every day because they would call me water balloon ears. Water balloon ears. Because that's what it looked like. It looked like two water balloons hanging off my ear, like an extra set of balls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it looked like. Absolutely. An extra set of testicles. So you decided, I'm going to show you what an extra set of balls could do. And you That's became, correct. And you became a tough guy. I became a tough guy. And that made yeah. me... Strong. Strong. And that's why, to this day, bullying is disgusting. Right. I hate bullies. Right. And it's terrible. It's, it's just terrible. So you believe that I, well, I do believe a father should teach his son or his child to fight. To Absolutely. Learn, to learn how to fight. To learn how to fight so they don't fight. That's right. They don't, they don't fight. Now, you said so. your mom's old, old, old school. Mm. What, what would she do? What's some things she would do? Like, um, like it was like, God forbid, if you missed mass on, on, on any given Sunday. Sunday, you had to go to mass. Yeah. It was a must. Snowstorm. It does, you know. Till this day, you still go to mass. To this day, I do. I still go. But, it, but if I miss once or I miss twice, I'm not like my mom. May she rest in peace. You know, if I miss, okay, I say a couple of prayers at home. But my mother, forget it. Forget it. And confession, you had to go to confession. <laughs> oh, yeah, on so a Saturday. When you go to confession, do you still go to confession? I haven't been in the confession booth in a while. In a while, okay. <laughs> right. So when you go, like, confession, I remember I used to go to confession. We used to go to... I, we used to want to see Father Mazak. Father Mazak, he was the best. He was a young guy. He would always say, ah, no, five out fathers, five little berries. Now, Father Ziccarelli, Father Ziccarelli had this very deep voice. And one day I walked, you know, the, the line was so long for Father Mazzarelli. Father Ziccarelli, there was nobody online because nobody wanted to go there because he was like, forget it. He would give you rosaries you had to say and you had to say them, right? So I was really in a rush and the line was so big and I said, I'll take a shot with Father Ziccarelli. What am I going to do? So I go in to see Father Ziccarelli, and I go, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. And I tell him my sins. And he goes, I'll not forget it. He goes, do you know why you committed these sins? I, I, nobody ever asked me that before. I said, I, I, I don't know, Father. I just did it. He goes, well, get out of my confession, and when you realize why, come back. Hmm. He threw me out of the confessional. I went out. I waited about five minutes, then I went back in again. So I, so I said, uh, Father, I, I was just in here five minutes ago uh, about you asking me uh, why did I commit those sins? And he said, yes. I said, well, I still don't know. He goes, get out of my... And he threw me out again. <laughs> oh, my God. And I was so wow. upset, I said, the hell with it. And I went and waited online with Father Mazza. Oh, my God. He's why? like the Wizard of Oz. Why? He threw me out again. No, but what if you just left... Well, I, I wanted to go to confession, you know. Oh, okay. I don't know. I, I, now, you, you know. guys are from an era where they would beat you in school, right? Yes, we were from where yeah. they would hit you. Like in how fact, if they that? hit you, it, it, the teachers, the, 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 the father, the priest, well, it wasn't the priest, it was the, uh, an order of um, brothers at that time. Even the nuns, we would get slapped, punched, 
We would get kicked. You have some crazy stories. Grow, grow they would call school. us wops, greaseballs. Wow. I mean, they'd be in jail today. They would be taken yeah, out with yeah. handcuffs. It, Guys would be duct taped sitting in a wow, chair. Wow. Duct taped sitting in a chair. Guys would be doing push ups on their thumbs. What about the guy? What about the. What? Know, the oar. Oh, the oar. Yeah, we, the principal had a, a, an oar from a boat, like with a handle, yeah. a barber strap, and a pointer. And he would say, which one you want? And I would always go, I tried all three of them out. I wasn't, you know. So finally I said, go with the oar because the oar, it's wind resistant. You can't get a good whip on it like the barber strap. That's, yeah, that's and I right. was telling everybody that. Finally, every, this brother, think about this. This brother was so smart, he started seeing things, right? He started seeing things coming. And he said, why does everybody want the oar? He knew something was up. And the next day, I walk in, and I got in trouble again, like always. And he goes, Mr. Palmateri, what do you want? I said, uh, yeah, give me the oar. He says, oh, you want the oar, do you? I said, yeah. He takes out the oar. This son of a bitch, this is a Catholic priest. He got a drill the night before, and he drilled all these holes in the oar. Now, picture him drilling holes, going, <laughs> drilling all these holes so he can get like a real good whip. And nobody asked for the oar anymore. <laughs> they they kind of sound like wise guys. I'm telling you, they would go to. They would be in jail today. What would you wow. and Anthony do? Anthony and I, we, Anthony, my friend Anthony Perry, him and I. God bless Anthony Perry. Him and I were in the same class. And brother, he would imitate brother brother Richard. He was brother Richard brother Richard Hartley. He would go, "Wait, what are you doing, stupid? You stupid whale!" Or he would <laughs> call us grease balls. And, he pinned me up against a pair of blinds once and took the rope and wrapped it around my neck and said, I'll choke the shit out of you. I mean, the things they did, I mean, I, 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 Anthony, we should collect some money from these guys. You have to do laundry, right? And he would send us to go do Miss Janoni's laundry. <laughs> Every Tuesday, we had to go do her laundry. And we said to myself, he's got to be banging her. What the hell is going on here? <laughs> we would go sit down and do Miss Janoni's laundry and watch I Marry Joan. I mean, I'll never forget that. It was... What would you even get in trouble for? Like, what were these punishments for? Like, always if, if you gave a stupid, if you talked in class, if you gave a stupid remark. Mm. So, we come from old school, right, Stan? Crazy stuff. Well, well, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. I mean, crazy stuff, right? What happened to me was um, the nun was out sick one day, and they got what they called back then a lay teacher. And uh, um, I'll never forget his name. The guy's name was Mr. Bartoldis. And I walked into class maybe three minutes late because I was in the boys' room. And he kept asking me, he kept walking towards me, and he kept asking me, why are you late? Why are you late for my class? And all of a sudden, he grabbed me by my throat, and I got numb. I swung my arms. I broke his nose. <laughs> I passed out because he held my, my throat. When I went down, back in those days, we had the desks that were bolted into the floor. Right. My, my eye right here. Hit the edge of the desk. Oh. I got, I had three stitches right here. But he was knocked out. Yeah, I, well, I broke his nose. Broke yeah. his but nose. nothing happened to him from... No, well, what happened was, mm, I got on the bus to go home. I had this big Band-Aid on my eye. When I got home, I had my head down. My mother said, pick your head up. And when I picked my head up and she removed the Band-Aid, there was the big hole. Oh. That, was, that was a half an inch from my eye. So who comes up? My father, my wise guy uncle, right. my two brothers. Where'd they go? Up to the school. Because uh, uh, then they had it. That was they it. Had it. They had it. Uh, but my mother being old, old, old school, this, this teacher had a wife and children. and She didn't want anything to happen to him. She felt sorry for him. And she just said, let the Lord handle it. So you gave him a pass. She gave him a pass, my mother. Wow. His mother gave him a pass. <laughs> Do you my got, mother gave the guy a pass. That's called old school. I still have the scar right here. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm happy we didn't lose one of those eyes. Thank you. That's right. <laughs> Do you guys have any stories of like... I would have been Sandy what? one eye. Sandy, <laughs> what? Do you guys have any stories of when you were you know, younger, kids, maybe some, some older adult picked on you, and then you went, told your family, and then your family kind of sent some guy... No. Nah. Do you have any stories like that? You know, the only like thing I remember of shits that, on you and then the only thing I remember saying is I was in a band <clears throat> and I'll say it quickly because I know we're coming to the end. I was in a band and uh uh we were supposed to be playing at this club. I was about twenty five years old and uh all of a sudden another club offered more money, so I canceled that job and that guy called me, said, Listen, 
you cancel the job, I'm going to come there, I'm going to throw you all out on the street, you better be here. And I told my uncle, my uncle was an old school guy, he was involved in a few things, and he said, uh, come with me. That's what they always get. What? Get in the car. Let's go. Get in the car. And we drove there, and he walked in, and he said, hey, Tom, how are you? And my uncle said, this is my nephew. You leave him alone. Don't ever bother him again. He's not playing your joint. Oh, I'll make this place a garage. Nobody will play it. And I, they never bothered me again. And every time I walk in there, they took care of me. So that's the only story I can know. But Sandy Blue Eyes, it's been a pleasure to talk to you for my old school. My pleasure again. Thank you. I'm telling you, you are old school. Look yes. at you. You look like a million dollars. Thank Ladies, you. don't forget. Okay, Cupid, Sandy, if, if you want to speak to him and you want to get a chance to talk to him, great guy. Look at those pearly white teeth, blue eyes. Uh, and so Tuesday good. nights, don't forget. Tuesday night, you're where? I'm on I'm on a, a old school cooking show on Facebook. That's right. Vinny Dice and Tony Sausage. Vinny <laughs> Dice and Tony Sausage every Tuesday night at what time? Every Tuesday night, 8 o'clock. So what do they do? They go on Facebook and look up where? They go on Vinny Dice Ruggiero. Vinny Dice Ruggiero live. And this is live. Live, yes. Vinny Dice and Tony Sausage, great guys, great cooks too. And uh, thank you so much, folks. I hope you enjoyed uh, the show here. This is uh, Chaz Palmetary. It's old school. Old school. We got to say, uh, uh, my son Dante and Homeless Pimp, our producer, we always have a ball here. Yes, thank you. God bless you all. Don't forget to go to chazpalmetary.net if you want to be at a show, a Bronx Tale, the one man show. If you have any questions? We're going to keep doing some old school episodes. Charles Palmetary Show at gmail.com. God bless you all, and uh, we'll see you next Monday at 11.